Now you only pay per bucket of email. That's all you actually pay for. I think I'm still confused. I have two domains. Do I have to pay to be a user on both domains or can I view, manage and utilize all workspace apps in both domains with one user ID? Okay, I think what Katrina is asking here is how to manage users with multiple domain names under one workspace account. And we've done a number of videos on our account on managing multiple domain names inside Google Workspace. And so if you're running you know, multiple brands, if you have multiple businesses, you want to be considering using them under one Google Workspace account if you've got the same team managing those brands. You know, but then comes the issue of, well, how do I manage the billing and what does that actually look like? So I'm gonna show you this on my little Jamboard app here. And let's say we have one Google Workspace account, right? And I'll just call that something like my Workspace account, right? And under one Workspace account, you can actually have multiple domain names. And we kind of know that, right? So let's say I've got itgenius.com, right? And let's say I've also got itgenius.com, Dot .au that's pretty popular some business owners will want to you know have multiple domains for multiple markets that they work in and let's say maybe I've got a you know like a, a side project or a second company here so I'll say OSH our second company is uh, called Onsite Helper they're not actually in our workspace account but for the purposes of this we will uh, we will use this okay so we have one workspace account and we have three domains in here right we have three different domain names available now under these domains what you then have is your buckets of email and your buckets of email are the actual users right so you have you know you've got Pete here you've got Bob there Sarah there okay so you've got three buckets of email with different people now these email addresses can be configured for multiple people using either add-on domains or alias domains and I've got other videos on covering the difference between add-on domains and alias domains but let's make it really simple here. Let's say for example, Pete wants to have Pete at itg.com here and he also needs itg.com.au and maybe Bob needs itg.com.au and also needs osh.com and maybe Sarah needs just osh.com. Now you only pay per bucket of email. That's all you actually pay for. So when I go to my buckets here, I pay one user for Pete, I pay one user for Bob, and I pay one user for Sarah, irrespective of how many domain names or email addresses we have there. So the easiest way to work out how much you're gonna to need to pay is to work out, okay, this is gonna be roughly equivalent to the number of humans that you have in the business is what you're gonna to need to pay. Now. From time to time, you may say, well, you know what? I need Sarah to have a completely separate bucket of email just dedicated for itg.com. Because if you're using multiple, there are some limitations. Bob here has to choose one as his primary. And let's say he makes IT Genius his primary. His calendar invitations will go from ITG. He can't send a calendar invitation from OSH. He can send an email from OSH but he can't send a calendar invitation from OSH. Bit of a bummer, right? The other thing he can't do is he can't accept a Google Drive folder share or a document share from OSH. It's the same account. I mean, someone can send one to him, but when he accepts it, it's gonna show as ITG. And so if these are very different brands, let's say Sarah's working across two different brands and they're like completely different industries, right? One's dog food and one's chemicals or defense. <laughs> Probably wouldn't want to mix those two up, right? Dog food and chemicals. <laughs> you would potentially consider making them completely separate. Now, I would ask if you've got two completely separate businesses, well, is it really appropriate to have them both in one Google Workspace account? You know, might it make more sense to instead move this Google Workspace account over to the side here, right? And then set up a secondary Google Workspace account and then maybe say, well, this, you know, this business here is completely separate. I'm gonna put that domain there. And then, you know, yes, you know, it's gonna cost us some extra licenses, but would have worked out the same anyway. And in that case, that keeps things completely separate, keeps your billing completely separate because you've now got, you know, your workspace account number two, which is gonna have its own billing there, and they're just gonna be completely separated and different. But 
what do we do with, we've got a little problem here. What do we do with this account here, Bob? Bob needs an OSH email. And all of a sudden we've got these in two accounts. And there's a little bit of a, there's a little bit of a, a wall here, right? Chinese wall between these two accounts. They're no longer connected. You, if osh.com is on the right hand side here, we can actually no longer add that as a domain name under our primary workspace account on the left. But what we can do is we can actually set up a forward. So we can actually forward. So we create Bob here. You could create Bob as like a bucket of email if you wanted to, but I believe that we can actually forward that using routing rules. What you would do is you create Bob as like an alias of another mailbox, and then you just forward it there. And then Bob here can also be authorized to send with that email address as well. So Bob can still use Bob at OSH and he's gonna be sending and receiving through that secondary domain. So I've got really complicated there, but I'm sure this will be interesting to some people who are managing multiple companies and multiple domains. That's how you do it. That gives you a little bit of a rundown on how you might structure your different Google accounts. As with everything on our channel, if this is getting to the stage of being a bit too technical or you'd like some handholding, or you just wanna to speak to someone in plain business terms or draw this out yourself and have a tech person do the implementation and actually just do it for you, then jump on the link down below this video, have a chat to our team, jump on a concierge, and this is the kind of thing that we can help you with, including if you've got two accounts in one and you need to split them out and migrate the data, or if you've got two separate accounts and you wanna consolidate them into a single account and you want to you know, merge that data into one place, you wanna make sure that happens without any downtime, emails going missing, making sure the DNS records are correct and all those things. We've done this many, many, many times, literally, I'd say over a thousand implementations of Google Workspace now across different companies. We'd be very happy to help out with that if you need some help. If you like this content, please hit subscribe and hit the bell notification so you can be notified when we go live or drop new content on the channel. If you'd like to connect with us, hit us up on social media or join our free community group. All the links to that are right below this video. If you'd like to learn more about Google Workspace and the technology ecosystem, you can join our free Genius Academy by transferring your billing across to IT Genius. Or you can join a Workspace Basics Bootcamp. Now, if you're a business owner and you're interested in an audit on your technology stack, or your workspace account, or you're looking to do a project in the tech world, well, you can take advantage of our free consultation. And if you need help right now, then consider joining Concierge or taking up a quick fix with our team for professional support for your tech stack.